we've discussed orthogonal projections on to vectors. In this video, we'll discuss orthogonal projections on to subspaces. So we've looked at the situation where we have a vector and we have a second vector and we project that second vector onto the first. We've also made the observation that instead of thinking of this as projecting onto a vector, we could think of it as projecting onto a subspace. If this vector we're projecting onto is a V, we could say that we are projecting onto the span of V. Now, moving into R3, suppose you have two vectors vectors v1 and v2. You can look at the span of v1 and v2, and the result is a plane. And if you have a third vector, a vector that isn't in the plane, you could project it orthogonally onto the plane. So the image is very sim similar. We have a vector vector, we project it down onto the plane, and we've written this vector as a linear combination of a vector in the plane and a vector orthogonal to the plane. Let's nail this down. Theorem. Let W be a subspace. Of R N. Then for each Y in R N, Y can be written. And this is a unique decomposition. There's only one way to do it. As y equals y hat plus z, where y hat is in the subspace and Z is orthogonal to the subspace. So in terms of the theorem, this vector Y hat is in the plane, this vector Z is orthogonal to the plane. 
Moreover, we have an explicit way to do this. Let B equals U sub one, U sub two, up to U sub N, be any orthogonal basis of W. Then why hat? is got in by projecting y onto each of these vectors in turn and adding them all up. So we project y onto u1. Remember our project formula and let's see in retrospect we don't want to insist on n basis vectors if there are n basis vectors that would make w r n we'll change this to p and now we project y on to u2. And we project y on to u3 and we keep going until we have projected y onto every one of these orthogonal basis vectors. In this vector, we defined orthogonal projection onto a subspace. In the next video, we'll do an example.